more, gain more. Hello, good people. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day so far. And welcome back to the Literature Corner of English Education Study Program, WMCU. Today, we're going to talk about Matilda, a novel by Voltau, as a top request of last week's episode. And obviously, I will not alone here because I'll always accompanied by three people from different semesters and now I have a very special guest chosen last week based on the guest speaker voting on our Instagram so make sure to follow us on our Instagram at lcesp underscore wmcu to keep you updated about our podcast and make sure your worksheet is ready with you and to access it online please click the link on our last post in our Instagram page Guys, thank you so much for coming and welcome to my not so bougie tiny <laughs> tiny room. And please introduce yourselves. Thank you, Regina. Thank you for inviting. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Sister Agnes. Uh, hi, guys. And uh, Regina. My name is Tika. Hi, everybody. My name is Aris. Welcome and please thank enjoy you. your very low budget drink, <laughs> aka stuff drinks. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. And well, my very first question is very simple. How's the book, you guys? Uh, it was very interesting and I like it very much since the beginning I read the first chapter. Uh, it, it was such a very interesting book and also applicable to any ages of readers. I found this book is very imaginative and fun to read. Uh, yeah, I agreed with it too. I love this book so much and I just couldn't handle my excitement every time Matilda gives her parents a punishment and how this book also has different kinds of character that makes this book so enjoyable. Whoa, 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 whoa. It means that all of you really do enjoy reading this book. It's good for you. And then what kind of text that Matilda belongs to, Sister Afni? Um, I think uh, Matilda must be fiction uh, because most of the scenes of the story are very imaginative uh, like for example can you imagine how come a five years old girl can calculate her father's salary yes. for a day just in a second and get it correct yes. it, it's such an impossible thing to happen in real life i know right how come i mean um she's just five years old and haven't attended any school even a preschool that is not possible to happen. Exactly. When I was that age, I couldn't barely count anything. Yeah, so and we do, we too. <laughs> I'm like, how come read. it's so impossible? And by reading the book for a week long, I'm sure that you guys are very familiar with it. Can you describe how Dal develops the story? Uh, according to me, the story is well developed. I mean that. As you read paragraph by paragraph, it gives you the feeling of want to read more and more. The story starts with how Matilda starts reading and how she got rejected from her own family and how she gave Mrs. Transbull punishment and got the love and attention she needs from Miss Honey. Mm -hmm. Actually, I agree with that. And I believe that every single text in this world, any kind of text, always have an implicit information that the author wants us to learn from it. Is there any implicit information that you found as a good thing to take? Uh, of course. Uh, of course, uh, there is implicit information that I think is very powerful in the book. Uh, Dal promotes reading and discouraging TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personally, I agree with that point of promoting reading because of reading, Matilda became so intelligent and it seems that Dal trying to persuade the reader to read more in order to gain more knowledge to became so intelligent. And back then, during the book was released, I believe that Helly of Television was really famous and then Dal wants the readers to keep reading. Um, the author also trying to say that every kid is born with their own blessings and every kid is unique and also Dal wants to show that a parent supposed to taking good care of their kids, give their kids love, tension and joy, 
not to reject their own kids. Oh uh, yeah, it, exactly, <laughs> Aris. Uh, yeah, I, so. I couldn't believe that they their kids like that, especially Matilda, who already been so shining, shimmering, splendid since baby. Yeah. Oh, shining, shimmering, yeah, splendid. Yeah. 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 Wow, I I love the word so thoroughly. Yeah, the word so like very... what a great way to describe a <laughs> shining yes. star, and. I believe that every book in this world always uses figures of speech to make it more reliable. And I believe this book does it too. Are there any figures of speech used by now <coughs> to engage readers to the story? Uh, yeah, of course. There are some figures of speech that I found really interesting in the story. Uh, like for example, from chapter 1 uh, on page 6, uh, it stated like this. The parents look upon Matilda in particular as nothing more than a scab. A scab is something you have to put up with until a time when you can pick it off and flick it away. And yeah. they actually, they are not actively cruel towards her the way Miss Transwell is, but they simply tolerate her presence, clearly irritated by how different she is from them and unwilling to show her the love and affection they should. Uh, mm -hmm. Eventually, the time does come when they pick it off and flick it away. Poor Matilda. This happens when they allow Miss Honey to adopt Matilda, who shows her the love she never received from them. Thank God. Thank God. And, um, and also, I, I found uh, in chapter 7, page 51, uh, which is, Miss Trashwell never walk. She always marched like a stormtrooper with long strides and arms swinging. Um, that is a uh, simile. Uh, Dust spends a lot of time describing Miss Transwell, allowing readers to get a clear picture of tribal women in their minds. Uh, the simile of Miss Transwell as a stormtrooper makes it clear how rigid, large, and belligerent she is. Three qualities that are central to her character and that will come into play repeatedly during the story. Thank God, I didn't leave at that era when um Headmaster was so cruel like that, and mm -hmm. reading is fun, right? You read and you gain. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly. It's right. Very yeah. fun. Uh, the, the more you read, uh, the, the more, more you get. get. Yeah. Exactly. And as you mentioned before, if, if I'm not mistaken, Tika or Sister Afni was mentioned this, that this book <coughs> is applicable for any ages of readers. Um, how would you describe the diction used by Gao? So you have the ability to tell that this book is applicable for any ages of readers. Um, I think Dao's style is one of very precious descriptive diction. He uses a difficult vocabulary for children, but they are able to understand using context clues. When he describes the cook, he uses some difficult words, like the cook stood there like a shriveled bootleg, tight lipped implacable and Superfing. Uh, implicable? What is implicable? But wait, wait, wait. Is that one even in the book? I didn't really remember. I read the part. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was a big, uh, big 124, I, I, uh, if I don't mistaken. Um, implicable is a word that most children and some adults probably wouldn't know. But from the context of the story, one can gather that it means something along the lines of superfing. Dust writing style is a lot of things at once. It's playful, funny, engaging, and is secreted all the same. In this book, a lot of time Dars relies on clever combos of wordy words to get his point across. It shows that the diction used by Dal is to the audience to laugh. For example, how Dal caught students in school as as, as, uh, 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 pupils, uh, yeah, right? pupils. Uh, I mean that pupils are very little, but the students weren't that little, so it's funny to imagine their size as a pupil. Exactly, pupil is so little, yeah. and then the students, <laughs> Matilda's age is ten, like one thousand times larger than a pupil. It's very, very funny. Uh, I just uh, love it. Um, the more we read the more complicated it gets, but it gives you the vibe to find out the meaning on the vocabulary. Yes, couldn't be more agreeing to that. And how about the juxtaposition? Did you find anything related to juxtaposition in the book? Uh, officially, yes. Uh, there is a queer juxtaposition present between Matilda and her father. 
Exactly. Um, when Mr. Wang is in difficult situations, he loses his control and he also couldn't handle his own emotion. Uh, he is very emotional. However, um, Matilda can keep herself collected and calm. Even when he inside, she is dealing with anger, and her stability allows her to think and reasoning through trouble. Wow, all I can do when I was five years old is crying when my mom did something wrong to me. So it seems that Dal flips around the typical behaviors associated with age, showing that adults are not necessarily more rational than children, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. right. Yeah, yeah. So our last point here is about culture bound. Uh, did you guys find any kind of culture bound used by Dao in this book? Uh, of course, the cultural bound is very clear here. As we know, Earl Dahl is someone that's so engaged to reading. And here's the main character, Matilda, in the book. He loves reading so much and it was fun for her. Oh, yeah, and at how Dahl is part of real places and real name when he was raised to put as the name of the character and the name of several places in the book, such as uh, the library is real, it was the name of public library where Dal was raised. Wait, wow, is that true, Tika? I didn't know about that. Y- yes, it is, Regina. Uh, anyway, guys, have you watched the movie? The movie is a little bit different with the book, but it is enjoyable as the book. Uh, the movie? Hmm, yes, the movie. Sounds good. I'll find it and watch it. Yeah, I watched it, but I haven't finished it yet. Actually, I watched the movie already and sadly they didn't put some interesting parts in the book to it, such as when Matilda super going her father's head. Oh yes, Regina. I wish they put that in the movie. <coughs> Me too. And well, guys, thank you so much for coming and had a little chit chat with me today. It's such uh, an interesting talk, and I enjoyed it very, very much. Uh, thank yeah. you also for inviting us. We enjoyed uh, spending time with you. Oh my god! Thank you. I'm so happy to have you guys here too. And the top request for next episode is a novel called "To All the Boys I Loved Before" by Jenny Han. Thank you so much for sending your requests by email and DM. We appreciate it really much. Right after this session, we will release the names of the guest speakers that will accompany me to talk about it next week. Make sure to go to our Instagram page and vote for your favorite guest speaker. That's all from us. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Regina, your favorite host, your most wonderful host, and see you on our next podcast. Keep spread positivity and keep reading quotes. Bye-bye.